Hi, I'm Katherine Corp. And I'm Kimberly Corp. And welcome to another episode of Let's, Let's Get Wealthy. That's W-E-L-L, wealthy. Today we're going to talk about nutrition myths exposed. We're going to talk about protein. Because how much protein do you really need? Right, so now the recommended dietary allowance for protein is 54 grams per 150 pounds of weight. Okay, that's not helpful because A, we don't weigh 150 pounds. And grams, yeah. really? Like if I asked you to pick up 54 grams of something and collect it, we'd probably, most of us would get it wrong. Right, and you know, when they do things like per 150 pounds, unless you weigh exactly 150 pounds, it's not useful information. Correct. But, but <laughs> and then they also tell us that it's 0.8 grams per one kilogram of body weight. Well, the problem with that is we measure ourselves here in America in pounds, and then all the food labels say grams. It's like, okay, so a kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So just think that a 100-pound person needs 36 grams of protein a day. But we have calculations We do. Coming so up. we're going to pull out some algebra here. Don't run. Yes, it's fun. Algebra is fun when you're doing it for yourself. So here's now. There are websites where you can calculate this for um, right online. But if you want to do it for yourself and remember some of those old tri tricks, here's how you're going to do it. So you put 54 in the numerator, and then you put that over 150 because it's 54 grams per 150 pounds, and then equals because it's a ratio. And then let's we took the average of women, it's 120, and you're going to put that in the denominator because we're trying to figure out x, which is the number of proteins that we need. So if you're doing this for yourself, you're own weight is going to be in that 120 spot. You yes. put your weight there. So then Cost do the math. <laughs> we're, we're not going to get a calculator here, but then it would come out that we need, or the 120 pound person needs, 43.2 grams of protein a day. And yeah. remember, that's a goal. That's a target. Right. So And protein is in a lot more things than you think, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> Indeed. So just in case you don't feel like whipping out your calculators and tr learning algebra We have again. this nice little chart for you that you can follow along with and kind of look and see, okay, this is what I weigh. And remember, you're going for your ideal. So you're looking at height and weight. If you know you're 30 pounds overweight, you're not going to eat the protein for someone who's 30 pounds right. heavier. If we weighed 100 pounds more than we do now, we would not uh, strive to be eating that much protein. No, and yes, because we like eating the protein that a 220 pound athletic man needs would be ridiculous for yeah, us. Yeah, we, we'd be little <laughs> balloons. Yes. So there's one more um, number that we look at. It's called the EAR, and that's the estimated mm -hmm. average, average requirement. requirement. And this is basically the bare minimum. The number one thing we hear from clients and friends is, am I, am I getting enough, enough protein? protein? And people are so worried that they're not getting enough protein, but in our experience, people actually are in taking more than they need. Yes. And if you're in taking more protein than your body needs, it's either stored as fat and the excess amino acids are excreted. So your body gets rid of it one way or another. Well, you wanted to get rid right. of it. If it's stored as fat, it's not getting right. rid of. It's staying there. So unless you're <laughs> absolutely starving yourself, you're probably getting right. enough. Unless you're on naked and afraid or something, you're city. probably. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but on how to calculate that, it's 0.66 grams per one kilogram of body weight. So again, we have that whole kilogram issue, but we have another calculation for you. Yes. So we're going to back to algebra. You put, if 0 0.8 is 50 is equal to 54 grams, so you put 0 0.8 in the numerator, 54 in the denominator, and that's equal to 0 0.66 in the numerator, and then the x, which we want to figure out in the denominator. Right. And after we do all the calculations, calculations. <laughs> that's um, 44.5 grams for your 150 pound male. Right. And when we do the calculation for ourselves, it ends up being around 36 grams of protein for us per day. That's our minimum. And our right. max, our recommended daily allowance was what, 42.3? We have it written down. Yeah, <laughs> but basically, we've got a chart for you again, so you don't have to memorize all this and go, oh. You but can just push pause yes. and read the chart. Yeah. <laughs> and if this is turning your brain sideways, we have a very handy dandy illustration that we have for you. We've brought a can of tuna. Yes, so this can of tuna is um, how much we decided it is. It's a three ounce can. We're both blind, so let me get my ounce. <laughs> it's a three ounce can, and it has um, 12 grams of protein. 12 grams of so protein. So basically, given what we just learned, I could eat three of these a day. Why would you eat three cans of tuna? You'd want it's some variety, but illustrative yeah. purposes yeah. work with We're us here. We're making a point. Yes. Yeah. Three of these cans of tuna would be all the protein I need for one day. That's not a whole lot. Right. It's not At a whole all. lot. So this notion that you need to go out and order the prime rib in order to get the protein <laughs> is a little bit off. Um, and then protein comes in many other disguises. It does. So Green check, things also have protein. They do. So check out this chart we've um, put up here for you with different values of protein and different things. I was surprised to learn that collard greens actually have more protein than spinach. 
Who knew? Yay, collard greens. Yeah. And that's even before you add the bacon to the collard greens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about Brussels sprouts? Oh, I forgot to look up Brussels sprouts. Okay, we'll look now up we Brussels have to add Brussels sprouts to the chart. Now we Brussels sprouts, because I love Brussels sprouts. But anyway, strawberries even have a little bit of protein. I mean, you'll see from the chart here. So things have more protein than you think. So it's not as difficult as you think to get protein, especially when we live in a society, like we're fortunate to live in a society where things are readily available. Again, right. if we were on stuck in the jungle on Naked and Afraid, we would be scrounging for protein sources. We would, and probably anything that crawled would work too. Well, not necessarily, <laughs> but anyway. So what you can also do if you want to learn more about this is health.gov forward slash dietary guidelines has tons of information, and you can actually download a whole little booklet. It's quite, quite informative. And there's also a website, choosemyplate.gov, and it really takes a plate and it kind of shows you how much should be your protein, how much should be your grains, fruits and vegetables, and so that kind of helps you see, oh, I don't quite need as much protein as I thought I did. Right, and be careful about protein drinks because they, they may be good if you've been advised to drink one, please do, but it, they're, sometimes they're called meal replacement, but we found that people actually don't replace a meal. <laughs> they just add it in, but sometimes they're packed with protein because they're intended to be meal replacements, and if you're drinking it sort of because you just think it's healthy, it has enough nutrients and maybe even calories to replace a meal, so be careful. I'm not saying they, all, they are all like that, but there are many out there that you should be aware of. <laughs> all right, we hope you enjoy this, but stay tuned. We have more videos coming. We'll talk about calcium, we'll talk about fiber, we'll talk about carbs, carbs. sodium. Yes, so hopefully we will um, <laughs> debunk, uh, we'll expose all of the myths. Yes. <laughs>